Hey, this is about uh, biliary hyperkinesia in males. So, I don't see any videos, I don't see much information. It doesn't, it, I don't think the symptoms differ from a male to a female for all I know. But for males, it's uh, eight times less common. That's, that's what it says from the stuff that does exist. This disorder, this, this gallbladder issue is absolutely um, wrecking my life. And uh, so I thought I'd make this video. I made one before. I definitely don't do that one justice. I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm going to tell you a lot of stuff about it. So... I suffer with a lot of other different pain disorders and um, and I have abdominal complications and other disorders before this happened. When the when the virus happened and, and you know we were we were supposed to get our, our you know injections I didn't want to get it uh, because I have a spinal issue, spinal inflammation like it's like an MS like pain disorder. <clears throat> of the spine and uh, so I was really concerned but uh, but I, I, I felt kind of forced by society to, to get the to get the vaccine so I went in and I got the vaccine um, sorry I just went on a long walk um, I got the vaccine and uh, 30 hours later I had an allergic reaction I woke up in the morning and uh, I was shaking. I couldn't even take my hand and stop the shaking in my arm. I haven't had a, a cold or a flu and a fever for like 20 years. So I, I didn't remember those, those types of feelings, like shaking because of a fever, chills. My abdomen hurt so much. My right and left sides, probably likely because it was going right through my back. Um... I had a rash all over my abdomen, chest, my neck, uh, part way up my neck for six days. I only brought myself to the hospital on that day because I was so sick. I could barely walk. Um, this altered my life. So I went through this uh, a phase of hell, whatever Moderna did to me. So it was Moderna, okay? I feel like um, suing the Canadian healthcare system. I'm not kidding, and you're gonna hear why. Number one, because I got that, and and that happened to me, but it's the way I've been treated. Um, nobody is liable. I don't know. You know, I'm, uh, you know, it might take five years before anyone makes a video like this because, you know, because this is a very rare disorder. So. In women, this is what I know. It's it's like one in thirty thousand or one in forty thousand, and for males, it's eight times less common. And that's from the information that exists. So it's like three hundred thousand. So they basically know nothing about it. My food, I had to completely change. I couldn't eat butter anymore. Um, like like I was I was getting diarrhea, and it was it was horrible. <laughs> Uh, at the beginning, I was getting multiple movements per day. I was so sick, like I just, I, I felt like, I feel like death. I feel like death now. Um, took a long time just to figure out what, by cutting down uh, the fats and, and sugars, and I eat, I eat completely healthy now, that cut my pain by about 35%, which was good. I had a um, a surgeon, a general surgeon, and he was kicked out of his practice, supposedly. Uh, I was told he was um, not his, they forgot to book his hours in the hospital, but I just saw another specialist who said that wasn't true. So I was left in the queue. That man would have taken it out if I would have found out what this was. I went to get a HIDA scan so when they can't figure out what's wrong with your gallbladder, I went to the emergency room 
in the last two years uh, about 30 times. 30 times. Ultrasounds, CTs, like every test you can name I got. Nothing, 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 right? And then, you know, the further you go into these hospital visits, the, they think you're, you're, you're like a hypochondriac or, you know, something like that. And the reality is just so much worse. Um, I don't mean the hypochondriac. So that surgeon ordered something called a HIDA scan. I've had a lot of swallowing difficulties since this. This may be due to it. I, I, he ordered a HIDA scan, and that HIDA scan, I went, and they, they screwed it up. When I went there, I would have had my gallbladder out right now if they didn't screw up my HIDA scan, the radiology. I went there, and you get, you're supposed to get something called a CCK injection, and uh, they didn't have it. And then you sit on a, a, an x-ray table, a special, it's called a HIDA, it measures your bile flow how slow or how quick it's going for two hours you lie on that table so they didn't have cck i'm like well okay well what do i what do i use and uh they they came and they brought me in sure i'm lactose intolerant i can't have that and so you know, like I'm a, what am I supposed to do? Drink and share with lactose intolerance and sit on a table for two hours and have diarrhea, you know? Uh, okay, yeah. So, I had like a peanut bar in my, in my bag and I had my water with me and so it was decided just to eat it, drink the water, walk around for five minutes and then go sit on the table. So I had it done and it said, um, I think it was like 33% which qualified for a hypo gallbladder dyskinesia. But usually gallbladder dyskinesia that causes this many symptoms is, I'll get to the symptoms, is uh, much lower. I don't think you can measure it that way, but the test was done wrong and I was left thinking, I didn't even get this test done right. Now I don't even have a doctor and I'm left to another place who, who's telling me it could be 12 to 18 months. Like, I just waited for that guy for, for about eight months or so. I was scared, man. Um, I'm going to get to those symptoms. And so um, it's hard to make these videos like this. I'm so nervous, restless colic pain through my back a few months later and with a lot of praying I got a call back from the radiology department and I said we have CCK now they're supposed to have CCK they didn't like what what plans do you have in place for someone who has lactose intolerance right they don't have that in place um, I got the so I went back and I got the two-hour scan it's hard to sit on there um, with um, with my spinal disorder and other problems but I had it done and uh, pardon me I'm gonna take a sip and I'm gonna it takes me a while to take a sip I'm very dehydrated pardon me one second I decided to make this because of what just happened to me, and then this happens every once in a while. I went back and I, I got it done, and uh, it's hard sitting on that table, man. And you know, the, the x-ray thing's like that close to your body, and you can't move at all, or it screws up. So I had it done and he read it, and he said, because of the trouble you went through, I'm gonna read it to you right now. I'm gonna calculate it and do it. So he came back and he said, uh, your scan is just fine. And, uh, and I said, okay, well, what's, it's at 93%. And so 
I thought, okay, well, that's, that's good, right? It's almost at 100. And uh, I usually question doctors a lot. They don't like that. When I was leaving, I, I went back to his office and tried to get his attention. And I said, hey, if there's hypo gallbladder dyskinesia, isn't there such thing as hyper? Wouldn't that only make sense? He said, no, there isn't. Okay. Uh, went home. I was eating dinner that night. And as I'm sitting down eating my dinner, I decided to look it up. And sure enough, it's called uh, biliary uh, gallbladder hyperkinesia. And so I'm like, okay, you know, this is these types of things have happened to me my whole life. This is just my norm. Uh, it happened to me with uh, two intractable pain disorders, serious intractable pain disorders that were misdiagnosed. So I called back and uh, and uh, and talked to him, and he said I'm going to look into it further. I didn't need to for him to look into it further, but later I got a call from him, like. Uh, three months later or something about three months later and he called and he said we have now made your case uh, an example to radiology for now on and um, I'm like okay well that's that's good but can you get me help so now I'm going to get into the symptoms I'm going to tell you what happened to me I had to go to an appointment the other day to see this second specialist okay and I, and I have to switch my medication times. Uh, like, I'm very sick, okay? I have to I have a lot of different medications I have to switch around. I have to switch around everything, my diet, my meals. And uh, so I have to switch my time because I go to an early appointment to see them. And, uh, and by, you know, the jet lag type thing, I switch my, my time by six hours. And so the day I go there, I'm so tired. And when you're tired and you have this, it's very tough. And I went there and I, I had my dad with me. Um, he brought me there. And uh, what he said was, I can't risk. So it comes down to this. You, you can't risk. And it differs from doctor to doctor, surgeon to surgeon. I can't risk a malpractice suit, that's what he said, by taking out a healthy gallbladder. In the meeting he said to me and my, my dad, he said, what is gallbladder hyperkinesia? So far, I've been through three, I've been to a gastroenterologist, sorry, who have I been to? three specialists who specialized and should know about gallbladders and each of them didn't know what it was I'm not kidding you and this man said explain it and I told him and he's like you know are your bowel movements white I'm like no you know like I don't have I don't have pancreatitis um, and I don't have pancreatic cancer but uh, all the symptoms are are the same so Pardon me, I gotta take another sip of water. Um, usually I eat, I have to eat when I make these videos because the gastritis is in my stomach. It's, it's really, really bad. the only way to stop this pain if you have a high gallbladder ejection fraction like 93 and, and you know anything 85 and above is in the acute range but because they don't know about it uh, they they won't take a complicated case so these are my symptoms I can't even take my hand and put it in I can't touch the gallbladder I can't touch it. If I push it in a bit too much, and believe me, I want to hold that area, I'll set off a gallbladder attack. So it doesn't, people who get gallbladder attacks usually get them after they eat a meal. But for me, 
it's not that way. It gets worse when I eat a meal, there's no doubt, and that can go on for an hour, two, four hours. But I feel generally unwell, like I'm like I'm really, really sick, like I feel like death. And I've looked a lot, you know, into this and hypo hypokinesia. I, I thought they were gallbladder dyskinesia. I thought these were the same, but they're not. Hypo, which means slower, is because there's like sludge and you see my burp, that's my gallbladder. Um, I have dysphonia of my throat. I have a, a diagnosed dysphonia of my throat. It's kind of like dystonia a bit. Um, very tough to talk. When this happened, it got worse, likely because it affected my stomach. Um, so hypo the sludge slows it down and then you end up having pancreatitis and uh, you know they cut your sphincter of odi or they get your gallbladder out and it resolves. With this, your gallbladder is your empties extremely quickly, right? 93%, right? You can't really get much higher. Comes out so fast and um, so I have uh, a lot of aching. It aches, 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 aches through my back uh, there's there's no way for me to know how to control it like it has a mind of its own um, and so when I was so tired because I switched my times uh, that was two days ago um, no so I had my appointment two days ago yeah so I switched it then when I went to appointment that day I was so tired the next day so, so yesterday morning when I woke up the pain was so bad when I got out and it's like I'm, I take pain meds, eh? so they co tend to cover things up. I'm gonna tell you what they are. I'm in my bed and I'm writhing, right? Writhing back and forth, back and forth. Is this a stone, a kidney stone? Because I, I, I've passed probably 15 stones in two years. Two years I've passed about 15 stones. No, three years, sorry. Um, you know, it's like a, it's like a ball of aching you just want out and I, I I got up and I you know I eat right away take my pain meds immediately and when I got up out of my bed I mean like I couldn't hold it in like I'm I'm moaning I'm groaning for 30 minutes I take an Ativan just a small dose of Ativan oxycodone short-acting oxycodone long-acting and what's most important is, and if you're having to experience what I'm going through, I would get this little pill here called Buscapan. If you're in the United States, then you have something called, um, okay, so Buscapan is also call, called Hyocene. In the United States, they, they, they're illegal. Um, it's called Hyosamine that you need. Those are the two things. If you're outside of the States, Boscopan, which is Hyocene. If you're in the States, Hyosamine. They're both the same things. It's just there was a side effects thing that happened in the States and they decided to get rid of it. It was stupid because it's a very safe medication and non addictive, nothing. That medication, uh, Boscopan, stops. Um, it's, it's excellent at stopping colic anti, you know, smooth muscle contraction, it, it helps relax, and it's excellent. I would, I would die without it. So I'm going to tell you what happened. When this happened to me, okay, when I first got this because of the Moderna vaccine, um, see, I get kidney stones, I get, uh, my due diet changed a lot with that, though. Um, you know, now I'm having my gallbladder like this all the time, just worse when I eat. I have something called the splenic flexure syndrome, and, and so I have uh, low weight already, okay? I'm really healthy, though, as far as, you know, keeping strong, exercising, walking, all that stuff, and eating. I cannot gain past what I'm at right now. So I went from 122 pounds to 102. I thought I was going to die. I went down to 102 pounds, and I'll tell you something, they didn't give a shit. Nobody gave a shit. And if I would have lost 10 more pounds, 
uh, from what I read, if you get to 85 pounds, if you get to 85 pounds, you die within six months. That's what that's what it says. You can look that up. Uh, my doctor wouldn't do anything um, because she can't. She's tried to do all she can. She's a good doctor. Pardon me, I got to take another sip. This is a long video. I've looked through the studies and every study, every study's conclusion is you have to get it taken out. Sure, there are people who, who just happen to have a high fraction maybe and, and can deal with it otherwise with, with medication. If I didn't have this Boscopan, I'd be on my knees. I'd be in the ER every single day. So, the, so what I am going through every single day now for, it's going to be two years and, and just under three months. It's like walking around with pancreatic cancer because a gallbladder attack is a gallbladder attack. It's the same pain. In every study I've seen, they say to take it out. And so I'll just read this to you. There's much better information in other places, but they're so hard to find. You have to look through, you're going to have to look through a lot of stuff. I'll leave this in the description box. This is the, re I'm just going to read results. This is all I'm saying. Demographics um, in the control group. So there, I don't know how many people there, 46 people. And then the study group were respectively age 40 years plus 16 years and 39 years. Okay, sorry, body mass. 86% females in each resolution of pain after cholecystectomy, which means have your gallbladder taken out, occurred in 18 of those uh, uh, 21 patients. However, pain persisted um, in 20 of 25. Treated medically after mean follow-up of 36 to 28 months. I don't understand this. Um, range 10 to 120 months. Pain resolution with, with taking your gallbladder out was independent of demographic variables, hepatobiliary, immunodiacetic acid scan, ejection fraction, and chronicity of pain. The odds of resolution was 20 times higher with cholecystectomy, having it out, than without. So, what it comes down to is the person who you're dealing with and um, so it feels like I'm walking around like like it's pancreatic cancer I don't just get this I don't I'm not just having this pain when I decide to go and eat some food and as I'm eating my food it burns it burns it burns through my back up my shoulder up my neck um, I don't get a lot of uh, nausea. I, I sometimes I feel like I'm gonna I throw up, but I don't get a lot of it because I take opiates. I take I take Dicetel opiates, Boscopan, CBD, Gabapentin, Ativan. So when I go see these people, they have no idea what I'm going through, and it really pisses me off. I need it out. It's torn my life apart. I hope this helps someone. And the reason I uh, so I am, I am at the point uh, on Monday I'm going to contact a lawyer. That's my only next step I can take. I don't have the time to go through other people and wait that long. This is so bad. Like this isn't in the severe range. It's acute. Um, I want to get out of this shot right here, right now in this video because it's aching that much. Um, so it's like having gallstones, gallstone pancreatitis pancreatitis, pancreatic cancer, same pain. Um, I've had kidney stones and uh, I actually just went through a horrible episode the other 
about three weeks ago. It was the worst I had in my lifetime of them. And that was bad. Um, that was worse, that episode. But this as a whole is just, it's worse than stones. Um, it just consistently burns. And uh, I have to eat slowly, so as, as I'm eating, it just starts to burn more and more and more. Holy, holy, holy. Thanks for watching this video. Keep looking at, uh, at, the, at the articles that they're putting out. I'll put this in there. I could put a better one in. I'll put a better one in there that I found yesterday. Um, I forget where all the ones are. I've been through all this. Um, Godspeed to anyone who's going through this. I don't know any males who are. Um, I feel like I'm dying all the time. Thanks.